Hi, welcome to the equipment review video. We're going to be reviewing the Siglent SDM 3055. This is a five and a half digit bench top multimeter. The reason why I got this is because we need to make microvolt level measurements and the purpose of this video is to review the precision and accuracy of this and what we're going to do is we're going to use the Agilent Precision LCR meter to to um, verify that this guy gets decent results. Right now these two devices have been turned on and you usually got to let them warm up uh, about half an hour to an hour before you start using them so that they can stabilize. Yeah, in the meantime, now what happens um, whenever I buy a new meter, it's usually a long time between meters and it's usually a good idea at that time to buy a new set of adapters and connectors and cables because as you can see by the last banana type jack meter I have that the cables are like broken and they're so old that the you know the, the, they're not even flexible anymore and they're pretty much at their end of their life they're really garbage and so what I did is I bought a whole assortment of new adapters and cables um, for the Siglent but I bought it for enough for all of the meters that I have so I can basically upgrade everybody. And what I have here is an assortment of the little adapters that are very handy to have uh, when you have meters such as banana jack type meters. This is a, is a binding post so you could put this in to your meter or you could even stack it on top of the other ones that are already there. These stackable ones are really nice. But the interesting thing about all of these are these little holes here. What are those little holes for? Well, let me demonstrate on one of these other guys here. These little holes allow you to make custom cables. For example, okay, if I stick a screwdriver down the banana jack hole, I can back out. I don't know if you can see in the camera. I can back out the little connection there, the little terminal. And I can use this little block here as a strain relief. And then I can clamp down. And so you can make your own custom cables this way. Of course, I'm not going to do the other side, but you could do both sides, obviously. Or, like what I did in the other video, I put a little capacitor between the terminals to help filter, you know, to, to help shunt the DC or the AC that's running on the cables. Okay, and the beautiful thing, even after you do this, you can still stack on top another banana jack on top of it. Or, you know, you can just keep stacking these things as, as much as you want. So this is very handy stuff to have. Okay, and this one here takes uh, a BNC input. I also have BNC cables. And, you, again, you have the ability to, to put uh, cables or components to these holes, and you can put other cables and components into the little holes that are in here. And you can also stack banana jacks on top. They're very, very handy and useful. Of course, they charge a lot of money for these. This is the other one where it goes from binding posts to a, fee, a male BNC. These are the ones I showed before. These are just the plain banana jack stackable. Allows you to do a lot of things. This goes from the banana jacks that you could put into the meter. Allows you to go put a BNC cable and measure from a BNC cable into your meter. And you can still stack bananas on them if you really need to see. And the cool thing about this is if you just want to go from a BNC to a other type of cable, you could just simply do this. Or you could do this. Or you could just put the cable through and make your own custom cable to adapt to the BNC. Very handy to have. And of course they have the other one for the other gender of BNC. These are very, very handy things to have. Of course, they charge a lot of money for them. The other thing that I, I did is I ended up buying sets of cables. These are 12 inch stackable banana. And what's cool about these, these are not only are they stackable, okay, but they also have a little hole there so you could do other things as well. They're very flexible, you can do lots with them. So I got a set of these, a pair of red and a pair of black and 12 inch, a pair of red and black and 18 inch, and then I just bought a 36 inch set uh, with all different colors because I got that gene where I have to have all the colors. Okay, to augment that, I've got 
18 inch new, uh, I don't know what you call these, clip. These are the kind of leads you use when you're doing, uh, you know, integrated circuits and you want to clip to the standard integrated circuit leads. These aren't for SMT, these are for like regular dip connectors. And what you do when you buy these, make sure you get the 18 gauge cable. It's a lot more flexible and it lasts longer. And these are also rated for uh, 600 volts as opposed to 300 volts for the flimsy stuff that's only, uh, I think it's, I don't know, 20 gauge. Okay, so I've got a set of these in 18 inch in red, set in black. And then I have a, I believe these are 18 inch in assorted colors for whatever reasons. And the beauty of these is if you just want to extend one of these with a long cable, you just get your other longer 36 inch cable. I don't have a 36 inch here. Just extend it this way. I believe you could also extend it this way. I'm not 100% sure that works, but you know, so these have lots of flexibility. Okay, that's the review of all the little parts that I bought to support the, meter, the new meter. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to wait the one hour for these meters to warm up and we'll see you in an hour. Okay, now that these uh, pieces of equipment have been warming up for about an hour, uh, what we're going to do is our first evaluation of the signal as we're going to do a precision resistance measurement using a four wire type measurement. The Agilent Precision LCR meter does everything with four wire, you know, also known as Kelvin leads. And so we should need to do an apples to apples measurement. The, what, the, what, the, what the Kelvin or the four wire measurement does, it takes the lead length out of the measurement. That's the key. In other words, the leads aren't part of the measurement if you set it upright. So what we're going to do first is we're going to compensate the uh, Agilent. And we're going to go to correction menu. And first we're going to correct for, oh, oh you know what I got to do first? Hold on. I got it. I got the averages set to 100 averages. And that takes a long time to make a measurement. So we're going to set the averages to uh, 30. Okay, so now we're going to go to Mez Setup, Correction, and then we're going to do the open measurement. The open measurement is done. Will you keep the leads apart? And then you do Measure Open. Now it's measuring the open. For the siglent in the four wire, oh, I got to set it up for four wire. Go and shift. So now it's set up for four wire measurement. And okay, now we're going to go back to the agilent and do the short measurement. In the short measurement, you'd basically just short the leads together. And make sure they don't come apart. And you do your measure short. And the siglent is coming up with nine milliohms of resistance. So what we want to do is we probably want to go in and take out the nine milliohms. And there we go. Now, oh, it finished. Uh, I got to do that again because the leads came apart before it finished. I got to do it again. You know what? Do it this way. It's easier if they're both biting something instead of each other. Do it again. Okay. So while that's finishing, what we have is we have some precision resistors. We have a 100 ohm, 0.005% precision resistor. Very expensive resistor. It's a resistor reference. And then we also have a 10K ohm, again, 0.005% resistor. Now let's start with the 10K ohm and see what these guys give us. Let's go back to the display. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so that's saying four micro ohms. Okay, that's good. So let's see when we put the 10k ohm on to the Agilent, what we get. I'm sure they're not shorting. Well, look at that. Okay, that's. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that good. <laughs> That is really, really good. So the Agilent says it's 10.00007 K ohms, which is really, really, really good. I did not expect this Agilent has been, I've owned this Agilent for 10 years now. I have never sent it out for Cal. I'm very impressed. Now let's see what the Siglent does. Well, Siglent says it is 9.9994K. Okay, well, you know, I forgot to do the calculation of what 0.005% is, but we'll do that in a minute. Let me just go measure the other resistance. Okay, here is the 100 ohm. Okay, so the Agilent says it is 99.99833 ohms. Okay, 99.9983 ohms. Okay, let's put it on the Siglent and see what we get. Oh, I have 30 averages on the Agilent. I have 100 averages on the Siglent. Okay, and the Siglent says it is 99.992 ohms. All right, well, let me go get a calculator and find out what these values should have been. I will be right back. Okay, so here's the breakdown for the 10K ohm trial. The Agilent was nearly dead center, and the Siglet was just off by a little bit on the downside. This is where, according to the 0.005% tolerance, this is where the 10K ohm resistor should have been somewhere in this range. And Agilent was in dead center. For the 100 ohm, this is the range of Values. This is where the, the true resistance of that resistor should be according to the manufacturing tolerance, and the Agilent was in the range. Again, the Siglent was just a little shy. Now, it could be that there's some kind of startup calibration I'm supposed to do on the Siglent, but still, this is very respectable for a simple $400 meter, where this Agilent is, well, when I purchased it 10 years ago, it was $14,000. I think it's now $18,000 because of inflation. So that's the difference between a $18,000 piece of equipment and a $450 piece of equipment. Still, it's very respectable and it's still very usable. Uh, it's got enough digits of precision for just about anything we're going to do down here. So I'm, I'm impressed with it so far. And it could be that I'm running with a little bit of an offset. It could be something I did wrong with measurement because at least these are consistently off. Okay, so that's, that's respectable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a long-term drift check. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie, we're going to short both leads together and then let it sit for a long period of time. Oh, this works better if I use this.
Okay. Now the reason why it takes a while for the agile to update is I got I got 30 averages, and this guy can do 100 averages really really fast. This guy takes a long time to do just 30 averages. Uh, the reason why is he's he's not just taking resistance; he's actually measuring reactance. So it takes him a lot longer to make a measurement than he does. And so what we're going to do now is write down what the values are. Okay, we have zero on the siglent pretty much, and we have. Hold on. I guess when I came close, I changed the value. Okay, we have about three micro ohms on the Agilent. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to sit and let these things sit for about two hours and then see how far off they drift over time. Okay, it's been more than two hours. And the zero hold on the Siglent is good, and we're still in the micro ohms on the Agilent. Now let's go back and remeasure these resistors and see how close the readings come to the readings I had we had two hours ago. And we're going to start with the 10k ohm, and the Agilent is right on the money, off by well, it's dead on the money. So the Agilent is good. And let's see what the Siglent says. And what was it? Siglent has given exactly the same answer it gave two hours ago. Very, very good. Let's put the 100 ohm in. Now you have to give the Agilent, because got, I've got um, 30 averages, it takes, you have to let it update twice. So that's the answer right there. And 99833. So it's pretty damn good, pretty damn close. And I'm holding it, I should just let it let it go. Pretty good answer. Now let's see what the Siglent does. And the Siglent's answer before was 99.992. So it's within the one LSB. That's pretty damn good. After two hours of whatever temperature changes are going on in this environment. This is my garage and it's 53 degrees. And so both of these equipment, so these have good stability over time, decent stability. I, I picked two hours because two hours is, if I'm going to make whole sequence of measurements, that's about how long it's going to take to make the whole sequence of measurements. After you, so you want to have consistency at least within the two hours. I probably these could probably go all day and still be good. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to make a milliohm uh, measurement to see how accurate these things are in the milliohm. And what we're going to do for the milliohm is get a piece of wire. And, uh, well, let me, let me go get the piece of wire and then I'll explain it to you. Okay, in this test we're going to run a, a milliohm measurement. And what I've done is I went on Wikipedia and found that I could make a 50 milliohm resistor if I get 5 and 13 16 inches of 30 gauge wire. And that's what I have connected to the Agilent right now. I don't know if you can see it in the video, it, but it's registering a 51.167 milliohm. So it wasn't quite exactly 51.1... I'll just call it 51.160. I'll leave it at that. And let's see what the Siglent gets. Now what I got to do with the Siglent in order to get this to work right, I got to make sure I use the right ones in the right order here because this is a, a million measurement. And then so what we do is we put the senses on the inside. These are the senses. So I'm going to put the senses on the inside. closest to where, I don't know if you can see, but what I did is I took the very fine wire and I put big hunking 10 gauge pieces of wire. So what I got, these are the sense connections from the four wire. I got them very close to where the fine wire leaves the, what I'm going to call these things, the terminals. And these wires are the driver wires. We can put those as far out as we want on the terminals. And that will give us the most precise measurement. Okay. 
Okay, well, 51 is what the Agilent gets, and it doesn't look like this goes below. Let's see if I can change the range. Oh, it's got a 200 ohm is its, is its minimum range. Okay, so it's off by one, one LSD, one LSD. So where the Agilent has about 51 milliohms, this shows 50 milliohms. And so it's holding true that we're off by one, a, a one unit in the last digit of this meter, which is pretty good. Pretty good, I have to say. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a happy camper so far with these measurements and with the resistance measurements. Next for the Siglent, we're going to do some uh, microvolt measurements. What we have here is the voltage test of the Siglent five and a half digit uh, DVM. What this box contains is a precision voltage reference and a resistor divider chain. The resistors were measured with the Agilent LCR meter after they were soldered in. Okay, and this reference is designed to produce a voltage of 4.096 volts plus or minus one millivolt. And as you can see, and this is the output, and this is the divider one, the divider one voltage should be this, and the divider two voltage should be this voltage over here, 33.0306 um, millivolts. And as you can see, the voltage output is dead on the money as far as what this is supposed to put out and what the Siglent is reading. I'm very impressed with all these things. So what we're going to do now is move the meter to the next part over there. And you're seeing it's a little bit off. I'm wondering about that. I would expect that to be much, much better. I don't know if it's a, that I made a mistake when I did the calculations. I'm going to have to go back and, or the measurements of the resistor. I don't know. I've got to go back and double check. And the white connection is the third divider output. And that's like almost, that's like dead on the money. That's within three microvolts of what the computed value is. So, and the computed value is down over here. So I'm, I'm very happy with this Siglent. Um, it's within microvolt. Let me just double check and see if there's an input offset by putting these together. Oh, and it's off by three microvolts. So let's turn on the, take out the input offset and go put it back on. Bingo! That's good. That's very good agreement with the so that makes me think I made a mistake on this value over here. Somewhere along the because that's that's within one microvolt of what it should be, according to the measurements made of the resistors with the Agilent LCR meter and the reference over here, which was within two uh, point two millivolts of the rated output of it. So I'm I'm very happy with the performance of this Siglent. Uh, it, it can actually do the microvolt measurements to a high degree of precision. You just got to watch the input offset. That's all. So anyway, thank you very much. This ends the uh, performance evaluation of the Siglent DMM. I'm very happy with the purchase. I think it's going to be, it's going to serve us well going into uh, ethereal mechanics. Thank you very much. Oh, and if you want to, the, the If people want to help with the Ethereal Mechanics project, you can please visit our Patreon site at www.etherealmechanics.com and make a donation. And you can put suggestions for other equipment maybe that we should acquire and maybe do reviews on. Thank you very much. Okay, I just went back and double checked. There was a bug in the spreadsheet. Uh, these are the new values. This value only changed by uh, two microvolts. Went from 33306 or 33304. This one came down a little bit. Uh, it's more reasonable. It came down, it was 0.772435. Now it's 766108. And let's go from the top again to the reference output 
4.0962, very repeatable. And then let's go the, to the divider one output. And we're getting 0 0.76602, which is a lot better than it was before, but it's still off by, oh, what is that? It's off by well, about one in this place here. Not as great as this now. We go to divider two. I mean, we're off only by a couple microvolts, so that's pretty good. Now let's just see if we have an input offset again at the microvolt range. And you have an input offset at a half a microvolt, so if I take that half a microvolt out and then go back, we're probably going to be off by a little bit more. That's pretty respectable. So we're plus or minus three microvolts. And, you know, it could be that this is based on the Agilent reading. I don't know. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that plus or minus five microvolts is going to be the absolute accuracy of this meter, which is pretty decent and respectable because we're going to be going for stuff that's going to be in the millivolt range. So having a half a microvolt, I'm sorry, five microvolts of accuracy is, is going to be pretty good. And over here, oh, I gotta go back to the two volt range. 7603. And so this meter is working pretty good. We can accept readings down to, I'm gonna say plus or minus the, you know, the, the last significant digit is probably gonna be a half of that is probably going to be pretty accurate. So I'm going to say that this meter is good enough for our purposes. I probably would love to go rent a Agilent six and a half digit meter and see what it gets on this box here. So as far as I'm concerned, it's doing pretty well. It's accurate enough for our purposes. For the Patreon side, I'll publish the parts list for this little box here. So if you, in case you want to look and see what's inside and build your own. I want to thank my Patreon subscribers, it is their funding that helped acquire this piece of equipment. If you want to become a supporter of Ethereal Mechanics, you could go to our Patreon site, www.etherealmechanics.com, and pledge your support. There's a lot of different levels of support you can pledge. Thank you very much.